The bitter custody fight is over, but at whose expense? Baby Richard is back with his biological parents after a four-year custody battle. Tonight in Oklahoma, they have given up any hope of finding survivors. Rescue crews are ending their work, and as many as 20 victims may never be found. And the Boeing 777 lands in Seattle after flying around the world. Next stop could be an airport terminal near you. You're watching 11 at 11. 11 minutes of non-stop news and your forecast first on 11 News Tonight. Good evening, everyone. We begin tonight near Chicago, Illinois, where a bitter child custody battle played out today to a national audience. Two sets of parents, adoptive and biological, fighting for the same four-year-old boy. The biological parents won, but the debate continues over who should get to raise baby Richard. Leave him there. It's his home. Leave him at his home. When Ottaker Kirchner and Daniela Yanakova arrived in Schaumburg, Illinois, the neighbors made it clear where their sentiments lie. They wanted baby Richard left with the only parents he's ever known. If he wants to be a good parent, he should just let the child alone and live his life. But complying with a court order, the boy's adoptive parents carried his bicycle and his toys to a waiting van. Then the emotional goodbye to the four-year-old boy, who had to be pried from his adoptive mother's arms. The desires and the needs and the rights of an unwed biological father cannot require us to ignore the rights of children or to, to destroy existing families. There's one person. But the boy's biological father has been fighting for custody since baby Richard was just two months old. Kirchner had originally been told the child had died, but then he learned the child had actually been adopted, and he reconciled with Richard's mother six months after the child was born. The adoptive parents fought back, taking the case all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court, and that's why the case took four years of baby Richard's life. The minute the child hit the van and the door was closed, he was silent and within 15 minutes was laughing. And he was playing with his parents. It was remarkable. It, it was almost, an, uh, if you want to say almost an immediate bonding was starting to take place. Richard's neighbors, the hundreds who gathered at his home today, cried as he was handed over to his biological parents, while his adoptive father had to be held back, but could not hold back his tears. Hi, Richard. Is there a fall around? And today was the first day baby Richard ever met his biological parents. In Oklahoma City tonight, rescuers have given up hope of finding any survivors. The bombed out federal building is too unstable, they say, and they fear rescuers could be killed. So any further searching will be done by machines. The death toll tonight stands at 134. Rescuers fear 20 people might never be found. Cindy Glenn reports on the latest in this investigation and how Puget Sound rescue workers are faring in Oklahoma City. Rescue teams continue to struggle with the blasted remains of the federal building. No searching went on inside for the second day in a row. The building isn't stable enough to enter. Some of those uh, columns are, are fairly weak. The rubble's actually holding it up. Searchers from the Puget Sound area are talking about their experiences in Oklahoma City. They say the anxiety of searching a building that may collapse is part of the job. When things are not safe and the um, engineers have to strengthen something and we've got to back away from the building or something like that, that's part of the game. And uh, people get used to it. The team says it hasn't given up hope of finding someone alive, even though it's been a week and a half since the blast. Rescue teams never give up hope. If we did, we wouldn't be doing the job. Meanwhile, the focus of the investigation has moved to Kingman, Arizona, where bombing suspect Timothy McVeigh rented two motel rooms. The FBI has sealed them off and is looking for any trace of explosives. McVeigh reportedly considers himself a prisoner of war and won't cooperate with authorities. The search continues for the other suspect in the bombing, John Doe No. 2, and so far the government is rejecting the concept of accepting a plea bargain from McVeigh in exchange for information on other suspects. Cindy Glenn, 11 News Tonight. And crews from this area will probably return from Oklahoma on Tuesday or Wednesday. Boeing's 777 finished an unprecedented worldwide tour this afternoon. 
And in just a few short weeks, it will offer record-breaking non-stop international service to the flying public. Patricia Steed has more in tonight's Eye on the Northwest. The fastest commercial airplane in the world, Boeing's new 777, just completed a celebration tour. Over the past 21 days, the twin-engine jet was showcased around the world to potential customers. The uh, response was enthusiastic. Everybody loves the airplane. It's comfortable. And uh, it's nice to fly home nonstop after you've been gone for two weeks. Oh. How are you, buddy? Oh. There we go. There he is. I no scares at all. None at all. We worked the airplane pretty hard. We had uh, demonstration flights almost every place we were. We covered, uh, what, 45,000 miles in the last three weeks. And uh, just like it was an airline service, we left on time. We arrived on time. The jet took off April 9th, left from this Boeing field and headed straight toward Seoul, South Korea, where it made its first stop. From Seoul, the plane flew to Beijing and Guangzhou, China, Hong Kong and Taipei, Taiwan, back to Seattle to refuel and change crews, on to London, then to Cape Town and Johannesburg, South Africa, Bombay and Delhi, India, Malaysia, Singapore, and Bangkok. Yes, I, I think it's a, a, clearly a record because I don't believe anybody has ever done this nonstop from Bangkok to Seattle before. In just a few short weeks, United Airlines will receive the first 777. At Boeing Field in Seattle, Patricia Steed, 11 News Tonight. And the 777's first flight from London to Washington, D.C. is set for June the 7th. A recent aviation fuel spill prompted a warning to avoid drinking water from Lake Samish near Bellingham. No immediate problems are expected, but health officials say the long-term consequences of drinking that lake water remain unknown. The streets of Portland were lined with pro-life protesters today. They called it a silent life chain. More than 5,000 protesters picketed all over Portland, holding up signs opposing abortion. Organizers say the life chain covered 20 miles of Portland streets. This is the fifth year for the life chain. Ten of the 14 inmates who escaped from a maximum security California prison early this morning are back in custody tonight. In tonight's Eye on America, four of the men were captured immediately after they scaled a razor wire fence surrounding that complex. Six others were caught less than five miles away. Four men remain at large tonight, including two murder suspects. Stephen Shelton, a death row inmate in Delaware who donated his kidney to his ailing mother, remains in fair condition while his mother is on the critical list tonight. The two are recovering at separate hospitals. Shelton's kidney was removed Thursday and transplanted in his 62-year-old mother. Shelton received a stay of his April 5th execution, and appeals in his case are pending. New Justice Department statistics show a major increase in the number of prisoners in local jails across the country. The number of inmates reached a record of more than 490,000 last year, more than double the number a decade earlier. The Bureau of Justice Statistics says the biggest reason for that is the rising number of drug offenders. The U.S. is cutting off all trade and investment with Iran. In tonight's Eye on the World, President Clinton made the official announcement in a speech to the World Jewish Congress today while commemorating the 50th anniversary of the Holocaust. They hunger for nuclear and other weapons of mass destruction. Every day they put innocent civilians in danger and stir up discord among nations. Our policy toward these rogue states is simple. They must be contained. The president believes imposing an embargo is the only way to stop Iran from developing weapons of mass destruction and of supporting terrorism. President Clinton urged the nation to never forget in that service held today commemorating the end of the Holocaust. 50 years after Dachau concentration camp, prisoners were set free by U.S. troops. The president attended a service at New York's Madison Square Garden along with nearly 6,000 Holocaust survivors. The memorial was the largest ever held to mark the end of the Nazi regime. In Washington, D.C., Vietnamese Americans marked the 20th anniversary of the end of the Vietnam War with a rally calling for democracy and human rights in Vietnam. Though the war has been over for two decades now, they say the U.S. has a duty to work for the freedom of the Vietnamese people. The march began at the Vietnam Wall and ended at Lafayette Park. 
Well, time now for a look at our weather with uh, Nick Walker. Uh, hopefully, we're going to have a pretty good week. Well, Can you tell us that, please? Pretty good. Okay. Pretty good. W w a few qualifiers here, okay? And the mm -hmm. qualifiers begin actually uh, tomorrow. We've mm -hmm. got some rain moving in from the south, and it should be here probably in the Puget Sound region by tomorrow afternoon. So while the forecast first calls for some partly cloudy skies early in the day, you'll see it cloud up as the day goes by. And if you live in the southern regions of the state, you're going to find that rain even sooner than that. Temperatures much like today, though, but what is to come? We'll tell you about what's to come in a week ahead. I'll be right here. Okay. All right, thanks, Nick. Well, still to come on 11 News tonight, gambling fever has hit Puget Sound, but not everyone is cheering about it. Find out why in tonight's 11 News Extra that's coming up at 11.12. And everyone is cheering for the circus. We'll get in on the fun under the big top coming up at 11.31. But first, a big blast sends a row of buildings toppling to the ground. More on this planned implosion next. Live from Northwest 11, you're watching 11 News Tonight. If your mom says it's okay, leave me a voicemail. Uh-huh. Personal secretary from GTE. Hello? Guess who? Jim! Again? He's saving money with GTE Long Distance. You can too. Dial 1-800-SMART-CALL to save money with a GTE calling plan. Money you could use to order personal secretary. It's one of many combinations that can make your life easier. Call us. The Toro Wheel Horse Lawn Tractor. Built to last longer, go farther, work harder than any Toro Lawn Tractor ever built. Add to that the unrivaled engineering of Toro's powerful 44-inch recycler mulching deck and you can see why year after year, season after season, Toro Wheel Horse Lawn Tractors run circles around anything else. Toro, when you want it done right. It's the Washington State Daily Kino Drawing for Sunday, April 30th, 1995. All drawings are witnessed and verified by a representative from the certified public accounting firm of Gaddis Cleese & Company. Last week, Daily Kino winners totaled over $132,000 in prizes. Tonight's winning numbers are 3, 5, 7, 8, 12, 15, 17, 25, 27, 29, 30, 31, 36, 40, 46, 48, 57, 65, 75, and 80. Numbers drawn are not official until validated. Making news tonight, destruction with a purpose in Philadelphia. Five towers at the Raymond Rosen Complex destroyed to make way for new low-income apartment units. Tearing down the buildings is part of President Clinton's plan to upgrade and improve public housing nationwide. More than 700 pounds of explosives were used to topple the 13-story buildings. In New Orleans, gambling fever brings yet another casino to town. Harris will open its doors tomorrow in the municipal auditorium near the French Quarter. The giant casino should keep people betting for hours. It has 3,000 slot machines and over 90 table games. Well, this is the opening weekend of Western Washington's newest casino gambling operation. And Paul Hawley is standing by live at the Muckleshoot Casino near Auburn with more on the ups and downs of these new casinos. Paul? Well, Kevin, this is only the first phase of the Muckleshoot plan. In fact, this is a temporary building that's set up right now. They plan to open up a new permanent facility sometime this fall. Now, the people here are very excited about all the possibilities that gambling brings. But when it comes to casinos, it seems that sometimes you have to hate the good with the bad. The Muckleshoot Casino has been open since Friday, and so far, business has been better than expected. Gamblers have been anteing up, and the casino's operator says the Muckleshoot tribe has been breaking the bank. This provides a, a great source of revenue for the tribe, which in fact will fund other social services programs uh, that will benefit tribal members, as well as providing direct employment for tribal members. So, you know, on the, on the flip side, it, there's a lot of uh, real positive things that are associated with gaming projects for Indian tribes. But like any game of chance, there are winners and there are losers. 
The vast majority of gamblers are here for fun, to win a couple of bucks, and to have a good time. But there are also people like Mike. He admits to having a gambling problem, the drive to get rich quick, the compulsion to put it all on the line. Sometimes it's fun. You know, it's, it's nice to hit a number. It's nice to look for that big piece of uh, pie in the sky. You know? I think that maybe one day I'll hit it, and then I'll never have to come back. Mike is not alone. Dr. Rich Palmer is a psychologist and a member of the State Council on Problem Gambling. He says as long as these new casinos keep popping up, more people will fall victim to the lure of the big win. This is a problem, and it's going to appear with an increasing frequency and make provisions to provide treatment for those individuals that are affected. Now, Dr. Palmer says that right now, nearly 3% of all Washington residents have some form of a gambling problem in one way or another. Now, organizers here say they're aware of those figures. In fact, they say they give their people here extra training to help spot out people who may be headed for any sort of a trouble. In fact, the head of the casino here does sit on the Washington board for problem gambling. Now, the objective here, they say, is to have fun and to make a little money, not only for the pride, but for the community and for the few people inside who are lucky winners. So, so far, it's working out well, but it's something that people will have to keep a very close eye on, Kevin. Well, Paul, two questions for you. Is it uh, pretty cut and dried on how the uh, tribe will make money off of this, and uh, do we know how much money they stand to make? Well, the tribe is very closed mouth about exactly how much money, but we do know that the casino here does hire about 100 tribal members here. They say that translates into money going back to the community, and it helps to keep people off the unemployment lines. And uh, in the long run, it makes uh, for good business for everybody here in this uh, tribe. Mm -hmm. That benefit uh, in addition to the gaming receipts. All right, thank you. Paul Holler reporting live. Well, still more news ahead. Chicken pox, an itchy rite of passage for most kids, but a new vaccine may help stop the spots altogether. Find out how in tonight's Eye on Your Health. Out of all the places in the world, the United States has some of the most severe thunderstorms, and some of them are going on right now in the central part of the nation. We'll tell you about that, and we'll also tell you about the rain that is to come for us, at least in the southern sections and eventually in the Puget Sound region tomorrow. That's next. Are you out there, AT&T? Of course you are. You're not going to like this. You know how all along you've been telling us at MCI to put it in writing? Sort of implying that we weren't telling the truth about our savings. Well, a proof of savings statement. We're sending them to our new friends and family customers, showing them how they save. Put it in writing. I hate to say it, AT&T, but you asked for it. Every lawn lover the whole world over is as different as the lawn they mow. That's why Snapper has created a piece of equipment that's perfect for every lawn, no matter what size or where. Snapper, creating the most beautiful places on earth. Imagine, adhesive so strong they help hold together 100 tons of soaring transportation. Imagine a fabric so bright it lets you see an accident in time to prevent it. Imagine a single disc so powerful it can store almost everything imaginable and protect it for a lifetime. These products and thousands more that make our lives better exist because the people at 3M imagine. Hey ladies, set sail for Westport where you can enjoy a real ocean adventure like whale watching or deep sea fishing. And for a real thrill, fish for the famous albacore tuna. Whether you go out on the ocean or stay in town, there's plenty of adventure in Westport. It's happening. Only the people who invented America's best-selling minivans could have a sale like this. The Chrysler Plymouth National Minivan Sale is here. Get $1,000 cash back on Plymouth Voyager, Roomier Grand Voyager, and Chrysler Town & Country. Chrysler minivan owners get an extra $500 back. Add that to auction package values and get up to $2,600 off. But it won't last long. The Chrysler Plymouth National Minivan Sale. See your local Northwest Chrysler Plymouth dealer. Now, Nick Walker with tomorrow's forecast. It's not flying weather in Texas, 
baseball-sized hail grounded airlines at the Dallas-Fort Worth Airport today. An American Airlines spokesman says 55 jets and 24 American Eagle aircraft were damaged. More than 150 flights were canceled. In our area, the clouds continued to part this evening as most of the scattered rain showers drifted out of the picture. Still some isolated showers in the southern sections tonight, but we're bracing for more rain by tomorrow afternoon. Looks nice out there right now, but it will be changing, and it's going to change throughout the day. As we get through the day, we'll see more clouds and then the rain in the Puget Sound region, at least by afternoon. Temperatures won't be moderated all that much. We'll still be in the mid-60s by the time we get into tomorrow afternoon. Right now, we're at 55 degrees at SeaTac Airport under partly cloudy skies. The relative humidity is at 83%. The barometer falling, 29.88. North winds at 13 miles an hour. No rain in the rain gauge at SeaTac. Uh, not yet, anyway. Right now, 67 degrees. That is our high for the day. 51 was the mild morning low, and 60 and 43 there for the normal, and 85 degrees, 32 degrees, our record high and low. Well, we are still experiencing a few little, very light rain showers in the South Puget Sound region right now and out on the North Coast, showing up on our Doppler radar this evening. But showing up on the satellite picture, a lot of clouds moving into the Northwest, primarily affecting Northern California and almost all of Oregon right now, but you can see some of them already beginning to drift up into the Puget Sound region. They'll continue to do so as we get through the nighttime hours to bring us that rain. The low pressure center responsible for all this will keep moving toward the northeast, the rain being carried with it, and we'll start off with rain in the southern sections probably by mid to late morning, and then by afternoon, just about everybody, except for the northeastern sections of the, our state, will begin to see some rain. Well, they're seeing more than rain right here in northern Texas. This is the same area that just got drenched with all the rainfall and all the hail yesterday. They're also experiencing hail tonight, and the Doppler radar picking up, well, still very many rain showers right now, and a tornado watch in effect for that area continues through the evening hours. This evening, we'll continue to see the temperatures fall down into the 40s with a few clouds out there. Eastern Washington slightly cooler over on the Idaho border. Spokane and Pullman will be in the upper 30s and 40s elsewhere. Tomorrow, well, send in the rain and we'll see it with temperatures rising back up into the 60s. As I mentioned, probably the northeastern section of our state will remain dry, but everybody else will get at least a little bit wet as temperatures rise back up into the 60s. For the mountain forecast, rain and snow at least in the southern sections, the southern Cascades, temperatures in the 40s, the snow level at about 5,500 feet. For your outdoor planner, well, plan to probably take that umbrella. You'll need it by tomorrow afternoon, or at least uh, some headgear to keep the raindrops off. But the raindrops will be scattered as we get throughout the week. Temperatures cooling down midweek and staying that way all the way through Friday. We're not talking about any heavy rainfall, any large amounts of rainfall. We're just going to keep it in the forecast for a while. Hmm. Probably a long time. And we'll Probably. see it again. Yes. It'll come back. And again. All right. Thanks. Well, a new vaccine may help prevent a common and very itchy childhood disease. In tonight's Eye on Your Health, millions of doses of Verivax, the nation's first chickenpox vaccine, will be made available tomorrow. The FDA approved Verivax last month, saying it is 90% effective at completely preventing chickenpox. Those who still got the chickenpox only suffered mild cases. Typically, chickenpox is just an uncomfortable rite of passage for most of us, but complications from that disease can be deadly, killing 100 people a year and sending 9,300 to the hospital. Preventing premature births may just be a matter of adjusting a woman's biological clock. An Australian study found delivery is determined by a biological clock that starts ticking during early pregnancy. Women who delivered too early or late had abnormal hormone levels during that time. Doctors hope to prevent the increased health risks of premature babies by finding and learning how to adjust that biological clock. Well, the Sonics are in L.A. for Game 3, and the Mariners have hit the road tonight. But it was a rough night for the guys in Mean Green. Rod with their story next. But first, tonight's lottery numbers in the daily game, 9, 1, and 7. Good luck. It's an amazing Monday when master illusionist David Copperfield presents the biggest night of mystery and magic ever. Participate in the impossible when you and David touch your screen and make the magic happen in your own home. Then take an amazing journey into the spirit world. It's an all new The Magic of David Copperfield Unexplained Forces, Monday, May 1st. During the Dodge Spring cleanup, you can really clean up. With up to $1,200 off well-equipped Dodge Neons including up to 600 cash back. 
plus up to 1897 off Dodge Intrepid, including up to 1500 cash back. And don't forget to check out the big selection of all new Dodge Avengers. The Dodge Spring Cleanup. See the friendly Dodge dealer near you. Hey, weed warriors. This stuff takes two to four weeks to kill weeds. That's a month. Spectracide's grass and weed killer works in just 24 hours. Quick and painless. Except I'm lying on my keys. Weeds can't hide from Spectracide. For centuries, the people of New Guinea have used a form of wireless communication that is simple, reliable, and convenient. So they can always stay in touch. Our geography is a bit larger, and our tribe includes all of humankind. Introducing AT&T Wireless Services, technology that sets you free. Call 1-800-IMAGINE. Five years in development. Nine onboard computers, 12 patents. Introducing the elegant and powerful TL series, the new touring luxury sedan from Acura. Engineered to run over the entire car industry and still provide a smooth ride. For cars that can benefit from higher octane, Texaco Clean System 3 Power Plus and Power Premium are formulated to clean your engine's intake valves, fuel injectors, and combustion chambers while you're driving to give you smooth starts and sure acceleration. Just give us five tanks, and we think Power Plus and Power Premium will make quite an impression on you. Add more life to your car! Take it to the star! This portion of the news brought to you in part by Texaco Clean System 3 Gasoline. Now, Rod Simons with what's happening tonight in sports. Can the Sonics survive the younger, newer version of Lakers Showtime? Question begs to be asked, and the Sonics will find out as they play three tomorrow night. Game three, that is, in La La Land. Upsets there, too. We start with baseball, and in the kingdom, the Mariners looking for a first. Three wins in three nights. The Mariners off to their best start in a decade, but never before had they swept a four-game set with Detroit, and never stays intact tonight. Mariners played like it was Friday after a long week at the office. Hello, Sparky and Lou. The guy that was the hitting hero, Chris Gomez. The single right here in the third brings Franklin Stubbs home. Gomez would end the night with three runs batted in. Look at this. The sack fly. Darren Bragg will make the great stab on the wall. But Kurt Gibson will come home no problem. Six runs in the fifth. Do the Mariners in. They go down and lose real ugly. Show you the scorecard. 10-1, 12 hits for Detroit. Mike Moore is perfect on the season. He's the former Mariner. Payback, too, because the Mariners had outscored Detroit 23-3 over the last three games. Next game will be tomorrow night at Texas at 5.05. Skipper told me three wins in four games isn't too bad. We'll settle for three out of four. It's a good way to start the season. You know, we've got a tough little road trip ahead of us in our own division. So we need to play well uh, starting in Texas and on the California and Oakland. But uh, no, tonight wasn't a uh, very good ball game. <laughs> you got that right. Milwaukee 4-3. to three. California's a winner. Texas loses to Cleveland in 12. Sox win their first game of the season. That's the White Sox. Baltimore over Minnesota. And no Yankee sweep. St. Louis, Montreal, and Houston are winners in the National League. Atlanta, San Diego, Florida. Philadelphia was washed away with Pittsburgh. And in the Pacific Coast League, it's Calgary 12-5. to five. You know, win tomorrow or else, really. Sonics have no other options as, as they move this five-game series of... To, to Los Angeles, it's even at one game. For Seattle, they're playing like Jekyll and Hyde. They haven't exercised the demons of the Denver playoff. No one's sure which Sonic team will show tomorrow night. Um, I think Monday's game is a very important game for us. Uh, we, we have to come out be ready to play. Uh, I'm sure they're pumped now. You know, um, visiting teams always want to steal a game. Yeah, you know, whenever you get a victory, then it's fine, but you know, we know the series is not over. You know, we feel we have the momentum. We're just gonna try to take it from there. There's little doubt that no upsets will occur out of the Phoenix-Portland series. The Suns are smoking, looking at this one. Got to show it to you. It was on national television today. Basically Sir Charles and crew and PJ really, really worried about it, and for good reason. Rod Strickland kept Portland close. Nice dish there, 26 points. But the man of the hour 
was a guy named KJ with 28 and Charles Barkley, 25 points. Suns win 103-94. To the Alamo Dome we go, and Dennis Rodman doing all kinds of things with his hair. That's the age ribbon painted into his do. And David Robinson with 19 points. Rodman would respond too. He had a season high 19 points. Look at the nice put back there. San Antonio 122, Denver 96. Phoenix and the Spurs get out of the weekend 2-0, but on the East Coast, far different games. Boston and Orlando to show it to you now. 47-point win the other day, but today it's a different story. The guys in green are just fine. Anthony Hardaway led Boston, actually Orlando, with 25 points today. But Sherman Douglas and D. Brown did the duty. Look at the long pass. D. Brown, 21. Boston beats Orlando. To Charlotte we go. The big play. That's right. Michael Jordan takes care of business. 26 points today. It is Chicago staying close, but down the stretch, Alonzo Mourning. 23 points. Charlotte 106, Chicago 89. And tomorrow night we'll have the Sonics game for you right here at 7.30, Lakers and Sonics game three. Certainly will. All right. Thanks, Rod. Well, the clowns are in town, and I'm not talking about us. We're talking about real clowns. We'll take you under the big top for some big fun coming up next. First, a reminder, those of you who watched our mini-series Buffalo Girls tonight, you can catch part two on Tuesday, May 2nd at 9 o'clock instead of Monday night because, as Rod told you, tomorrow night we're bringing you the Sonics playoff game from L.A. You can tune in for that at 7.30. I was just chosen for three new friends and family calling circles. I got so angry. I baked everybody who chose me an apple pie. Who chose me? my son and my two little girls here. Now besides all the MCI savings every day, on Mother's Day, all our calls to everyone in our calling circles are free, all day long. So to AT&T, who's so worked up about circles, I say, get with it. RV buyers, Winnebago, the most recognized name in RVs. And for the third straight year, guess who's leading the world in the sale of Winnebago's? Oldsbow RV. Our secret, a great selection of all the models, the best prices, and now zero down. And I mean not a penny out of your pocket financing. Come see how easy it is to own an RV from Posbo RV at any of our four locations. Posbo RV will save you a ton of money. lawn lover the whole world over is as different as the lawn they mow. That's why Snapper has created a piece of equipment that's perfect for every lawn, no matter what size or where. Snapper, creating the most beautiful places on earth. Every camcorder is on sale at Circuit City, and now's the best time to buy. Save on all the top brands like Sony, Panasonic, RCA, Hitachi, and so many more. Save on all formats. Save on all the latest features. Prices start at just $388.97. Get this popular Sony 8mm with color viewfinder for just $599.97. And right now, get a free accessory kit with the purchase of all camcorders. Low prices, great selection, expert advice. Every camcorder is on sale at Circuit City right now. They nest unseen inside your walls. The damage could cost thousands. But carpenter ants can be stopped by the exterminator, the Orkin Man. The exterminator wipes out carpenter ants with the awesome power of his advanced pest control technology. He destroys carpenter ants and their nests and makes sure they never return. Guaranteed. Call the exterminator at 1-800-800-ORKIN. One call destroys them all. Well, the circus is in town, or at least it was in town, at the Seattle Center Arena, along with the tigers, the elephants, and the high-wire acts, sometimes the frightening high-wire acts. The Shrine Circus offered entertainment that left smiles on the faces of children of all ages. I think it's radical. This is a pretty fun circus. What you radical indeed. All shows for the circus were a sellout this weekend. And that's part of the reason why. Well, if never, it's never too early to begin making your summer plans, especially if they include attending the Summer Olympics in Atlanta. Tickets for the Summer Games go on sale tomorrow. The Olympic Committee will send out millions of mail-order applications. And if you want to increase your chances of getting the much-sought-after ticket, the committee recommends you request 
a wide variety of seats. And hopefully Rod Simons has turned in all of our requests. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, everybody. Join us again tomorrow night at 6 o'clock. Good night.